Hi, this is James for Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to take a special look at Splendor Duel. Now, this is a two-player version of Splendor. Now, you can play Splendor two-player. This is a much better implementation of Splendor with two players. So, this game has been published by Space Cowboys, and in this game, similar to Splendor, you're going to be gaining gems throughout the game, and these gems are going to get you discounts towards other gems, and you're going to try to work your way up to one of the end game goals. So, let's go ahead down to the table here, and I will show you how to play Splendor Duel, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, so this is Splendor Duel. In Splendor Duel, you're gonna be trying to be the first to 20 points or have 10 of these crowns or have 10 points in one column here to win the game and you'll immediately win the game on this two player game. We'll go over what that means in a minute here, but set up for the game is super easy. You're gonna place out this tile here that shows your scoring, uh, your winning conditions basically. You're gonna place out your four different royals that are available in the game. And you're gonna place out this board here where you're gonna place your gems. You're gonna put all your gem tokens, which are gonna be these guys right here, into this gem bag and shuffle it up real good. You're going to place out these three privileged scrolls here, and you're going to place out the deck three on top, two and one, and shuffle all three. Then you're going to place out three. You're gonna sort of make like a little bit of a pyramid here. You're gonna place out three of the level three four of the level two. So I'll have four, let's move these over a little bit so it looks like a little bit of a pyramid here. We'll have four of the level two out. And we're gonna put it out for five of the level one. All right. In addition to that, we're going to place out these gems on the board. And we're gonna follow this arrow pattern here for placing out the gems. So we'll start here and we'll start placing out these gems following that arrow, winding it your way around this board. You will also place out these three privilege tokens up here. And after this board here is set up, you're going to randomly determine who's going to be the start player here. And the player who was not set as the start player will get a privileged scroll. So that will go to the other player. You'll place this bag back out because you're gonna need it throughout the game and you're ready to go. On your turn, you have a couple things you can do. The first thing you do is you have two optional actions. One optional action is if you have one of these privileged scrolls, you can return it and gain any one gem on here or pearl, but you can never gain a gold that way. Uh, you can replenish the game board. So as time goes by here, uh, this board here is going to have the gems taken out of it and it's gonna be going back in that bag as they get spent. And at some point, you're gonna to wanna to place what's in the bag back on the board. So you're gonna do this before you pick, so you get an advantage. So once, if you pick the replenished one, and you're gonna start from the first open space in this arrow pattern and go on out, which I'll show you again when we get into the game here, the other opponent will gain a one of these privilege tokens for you doing that, which is shown with this icon here. Those are the two optional actions you can take. Other than that, you have to take one mandatory action and there's three different mandatory actions you can take you can take up to three tokens you can take one gold token and reserve a gem card or you can purchase a gem card okay so if you're taking up to three of these here uh, you can't take any of these gold and you can take either horizontally vertically or sorry yeah, horizontally vertically or diagonally and you can take up to three so they have to be adjacent to each other. They can't be broken up, so there can't be a space between them. You can't pass between the gold here because you can't pick it up. Uh, you could just pick up three here, so I could pick three in a straight line. Now, as shown on this board here, if you get two pearls when you pick up, you have to give a privilege token to the other player. If you get three of the same type of gem, you're gonna have to give a privilege token to the other player. And that's your one action. You can grab some of these here. The other action you can do is you can take one of these gold, and this is the only way that you can take gold, and they also can never be taken from you. Uh, and you can then 
reserve one of these cards. You can do this up to three times. You can have up to three reserved cards at any one time, and you're just going to grab the card you want and flip it face down. And then you'll flip another one out. The third thing you can do is you can purchase a gem. If you have the gems that you need, so let's say this is a little later on in the game, and I have these guys out here. So I have I have all these gems. Now, you can only ever have up to 10 gems at the end of your turn. If you have over 10 gems, you have to return so many to the bag. Now, with these here, I can purchase one of these. I can't use a gold as a pearl, but I do have a pearl, two greens, and I can use this gold as anything else. So I can use it as this blue, and I can have enough to purchase this card and put it in my tableau. Now, there's that's the three different actions you can have. You're going to put that those purchased tokens or the tokens used for purchasing back into the bag. Now, there's a couple things that you're going to get with these cards. Sometimes they have a special ability, which we'll go over in a little bit that immediately happens. And a lot of them have a discount. So now that I have this in my tableau, this always counts as a permanent uh, diamond that I never have to pay. So I can use that if I pick up this card. I can discount this by one. This already costs one. So I don't have to pay any diamonds when purchasing this card. And that's going to be how you're going to get into these upper levels here. A couple other things with acquiring cards. If you acquire a card with this symbol here, uh, you can only place it in a row that already exists. So I could, if I only had diamonds and I got this card, it can only go here and it will count as a diamond for the rest of the game. In addition, uh, to other things on this card, we have these crowns. And these crowns on here are gonna help you for one of the end game win conditions. So if I get 10 crowns on my in my tableau, I immediately win. The other things that are on this card here is you're gonna have points. So this counts towards the one of the other two win conditions. So if I have 20 points, so I add up numbers and I have 20 in my area, I will win with this condition. But in one row, so all the diamonds or whatever, if I have 10 points, I can also win. That's how you get to the three different win conditions. So what's some other things to keep in mind? Well, these special abilities, let's go over those. So this special ability right here will let me take another turn. And that's very cool. Uh, this special ability says I can place this card so that it overlaps a jewel card with a bonus. Uh, treat this card as though it was the same color. So again, with, sorry, out of focus here, but with this one right here, I can place it with another card that has a bonus on there and it will be treated as that bonus. All right, then we also have some of these royals here, I'll show you in a second. This one here lets you take a privilege token. Now, if there's no tokens available on here, you will take it from your opponent. And if you have all of them, then you're good. You should be spending them. Uh, there's also this icon right here that says, uh, take one gem or pearl uh, token from your opponent, but not gold. If your opponent has no such tokens, ignore this effect. And again, you cannot take gold. Uh, there is one more icon here. Let's see right here. Uh, uh, take one token matching the color of this card on, from the board, so green. If that doesn't exist on the board, you don't get to do it. Now, a couple other things that you're going to run into the game is I just alluded to these guys here. Well, these guys are going to be awarded to you when you get so many crowns in your tableau. In this case, if I have three crowns, I can pick one of these four here, and I immediately get the points that this gives me. And if I pick one with a instant action, that also happens. Now, if I the next time I can get one is when I hit six crowns, I'll get my second one. And that's as many as you can get. You can get up to two royals in a game. And that's how those guys function. All right, so I wanna go back to a couple things here. We're gonna take some of these out here and pretend the board looks like this. Now, uh, as one of my optional actions, as you notice from the beginning part of the uh, how to play here, I could have uh, refreshed this board here. So if I want to replenish the board, I would take all my tokens out and I would place them on the board. And I'm going to follow from the middle and follow this arrow line as best I can here. And those will get placed out on the board. And then I can go about my turn normally. Advantage to this is the pearls here. There's only ever two pearls in the game. So when they get spent, you're going to want to try to get them out of the bag there so you can get them. And you are in prime um, 
you will get the you if you want if you do that so that is really cool also additionally i did mention up to three so later on let's say the other player picked these three but i really want to get the pearl i can take just one i could just take this pearl instead of three so i can do up to three on my turn so that's another important thing to remember also when you replenish the board don't forget on this board here you will give the other opponent the privilege token all right to recap to win the game all you're going to need to do which is have 20 points so you're going to get those points from this part of the cards here or some of the rolls you might pick up throughout the game in addition you could win the game uh, by having enough of these uh, crowns here to equal 10 and then you immediately win additionally uh, you could win the game if you have up to 10 points in one of your columns. And your columns are, are going to be of the different gems. So you can't make additional green columns. They all have to go together. Same with the other colors. And anytime you grab a card from here, you will flip this over. Another thing to remember is you can never have a gold stolen from you, but the only way that you get it is reserving cards. Additionally, the advantage to reserving cards is if you think your opponent's going to get a card that you want, you can grab it before you're ready just to ensure that you can get it. Plus, you also get that gold token to help pay for it. When you purchase a uh, card from this tableau here, you can also purchase it from your, you could instead, sorry, not also, instead purchase it from your reserved card. So if I had this flipped over, I could instead purchase this and put it out. Um, and that is it. We're going to continue going until someone meets the win condition and then they win the game. Let's go ahead back up the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on Splendor Duel. All right, so that was Splendor Duel. Splendor Duel is a great game for two players. It has great component quality on there. I really like the little gems on there. They're a little smaller than the original game, but this game is also smaller, but they're still really nice and tactile. For strategy, I really like the way that you gain gems throughout the game. I like that board and the little puzzle that it presents. And I love using the privilege tokens and having to manage those properly is really important in the game also. Uh, the way that they let out the gems and they added those uh, instant bonuses in this game is really cool. I like those. You can actually chain some stuff and get some really cool advantages out of those too. I really like aiming for those crowns and trying to get those royals on there. But you have to be a little careful because you want to uh, also try to... to uh, balance out those points and not let the uh, your opponent get the high point cards too so there's a lot of things to consider in that area really like how the game ramps up so it starts out slow because you don't really have much buying power but as you get those discounts you can get more and more stuff so things get faster and faster and same thing with splendor it just sort of ramps up to the end of the game where you're just getting cards and you have to really pay attention to where your opponent's getting close on things and maybe really take advantage of that reserving a card thing to try to keep them from being able to meet their uh, win at goal so there's a lot of really cool strategy and there's a lot of replayability in this because it, you have a lot of different uh, cards in those decks uh, so there's a lot of different cards available throughout the game the uh, gem boards always random so there's a lot of replayability in this two-player game and it feels fun so where i thought splendor dual or splendor two-player really lacked this delivers so if you liked splendor and you do want to feel like you want to play splendor two-player this is the game you want to pick up you definitely want to pick up splendor duel if you're looking for a fun uh easy to teach two-player game splendor duel might be up your alley also and that's my thoughts on it thank you for watching